Hey guys, I hope you're doing well this week. I know I am. Um, this sermon is called the Friendship Triad. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time together. And I thank you for what you're going to do, what you're going to speak. Uh, speak to me, speak through me. And let your spirit, spirit permeate the very essence of my being as I preach this sermon. Let Rachel die in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Mm. I was sitting in the bathroom um, when this sermon came to me. The Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to talk about making friends. And, and I said, what, isn't this like a little elementary for me to be talking about making friends? The Lord said, no, I need you to be talking about making friends. And he, and he gave me um, the friendship triad, which means just a structure of three, uh, which he said was uh, making friends with him, making friends with yourself, and making friends with others. So that is what I'm going to talk about today. So, um, making friends with him, first of all. Your friendship with Jesus is the most important relationship in your life because it brings a sense of self. And without the friendship with Jesus, um, and, and none of what I'm going to say is going to work. So, the friendship with Jesus is the most important part. And a lot of people struggle with um, a relationship with themselves and a relationship with others because they don't have a, have a relationship with Jesus. And a relationship with Jesus is basically what Christ, the Christian faith is based on, uh, off of. When when you think of a relationship, the when I think of a relationship, I should say, um, the thing that I think of most of all is communication. And communication uh, comes, when I think of communication with God, I think of the way we interact with God, the way we tell Him how we're feeling, the way we tell them how we're doing and the way we express our love and sometimes our dish our displeasure with him and I think that happens in like three ways that happens uh, non-verbally uh, with the raising of our hands or the uh, the um, the uh, with our body language and it also happens with our speech when we say we love you Lord, we praise you Lord, we give you thanks God, um, we adore you God, you are wonderful, you are, you are awesome. Those are all not, those are all verbal forms of worship and it is communication. Um, most of all, it's a lifestyle. It's, and you have to create, in a relationship with God, you have to create a lifestyle that you communicate with God. Uh, my pastor always says worship is a lifestyle, and what he means by that, worship is not just Sunday morning or Bible study or whatever. Worship is what you do in your daily life, how you communicate to God um, how He is uh, wonderful to you and great to you and how He is your Father and how, he, and how He loves you and how you love Him. It's all communication. And unless you build that, that friendship with God, that relationship where you can relate to God and He relates to you. Um, the relationship with yourself and the relationship with others will suffer. 
And a lot of people think there's some formula to a relationship with God. There really isn't. It's just about, uh, for me, spending time with Him, um, being in His Word, um, listening to His Word, either because uh, for me, I listen to um, the um, Bible Gateway. And, um, and sometimes, I, most times, I listen to a sermon. And when you build that relationship with God, He will build a relationship with you. And in that relationship with you, you will discover who you are, what your purpose is, and what you're supposed to be in the kingdom without building that structure, that foundation of a relationship with God. You won't discover that. And, and some people struggle with, how do I know it's God? How do I hear the voice of God? That um, kind of understanding with God comes over time. And when when you spend time with God, when you begin to uh, um, cultivate your relationship with God, understanding comes, wisdom comes. The Bible says, in um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says, um, it also says, wisdom is the principal thing, which means Wisdom is the first thing, and with all you're getting, get understanding. You cannot get wisdom or understanding without that relationship with God, without building that relationship with God. And you'll say, Rachel, well, how do I start building that relationship with God? Um, this is going to sound weird, but this is what works. For me, what worked for me? What worked for me? is basically to start talking to him. Um, a lot of preachers will say, well, start reading your Bible and, or start going to church and start doing Bible study and to, to tell you all the different things you can do. But what I say is start just talking to him. Start communicating with him. And once you start communicating with him, you will be led or s discover what the best way is for you. Because what most people don't understand is because most people don't understand that we are all unique. And with the way God communicates with me, will not be the same way he communicates with you. The way God gives a sermon to me will not be the way God gives a sermon to uh, Pastor Brown. Hi, if you're watching. Or, you know, T.D. Jakes or Stephen Furtick or whatever preacher you listen to out there. We're all different. God communicates with us in different ways. And the way you start in building that relationship is just by talking and just by praying just by just by that daily time it, even if it's just 10 minutes even if you don't know what to say and you, and you feel stupid it's okay to feel stupid you're by yourself who will know if you feel stupid or not like it's okay to not know the scriptures or whatever, but just start, like, just start by communicating. And when you start by communicating, he will slowly develop you. And, and um, you'll be surprised that an hour of prayer turned into, you'll be surprised that 15 minutes of prayer turned into uh, 45, and 45 turned into an hour, and this and that. You'll be surprised. 
So just start spending time with God. And a trick that works for me, now this may not work for everybody, is to actually uh, get a book and write down what you think he's saying to you. He may not be saying anything to you, or it may not be him, it may just be your thoughts, it may just be your understanding, it may just be how you're, you're rolling, but at least you're processing what writing down, or in my case, um, talking it out does for you, it's just organized your thoughts. And in that, you may, you may notice that he's speaking and you didn't even know that was him. And even start small. I would just say start small. And when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the Word of God, the Word of God is an extremely important foundation. But I would say just like, if you, I know the Bible is a huge book, and no preacher will tell you this, but sometimes it can be very intimidating <laughs> for us, um, for us people that are not, like, learned on it, but at least just start, you know, you can just, uh, it depends on the person you are where you start, because I'm a, I'm a, I love chick flicks, and I love all of that. So, I start, some people said start in John, start with the miracles of Jesus, but you know what, because I'm a chick flick person, I started with, um, A Song of Solomon. <laughs> that totally got me going. Uh, but, uh, which is uh, one of the most romantic books in the Bible. But, you know, start where you know. And if you don't know, just, you know, just ask Him. And that's why I said communi communication with God is key. And when you understand communication with God, um, you can build that foundation, you can build that relationship. And he's waiting for you to build that foundation and that relationship with him. And that will, and, and your ear, the, uh, your, your ears, your spiritual ears will open up. Uh, when you start building that relationship with him, your spiritual ears, your spiritual eyes will open up and you will be surprised what you hear, what you see, and you see all those pastors that you see that are so awesome and preach so well, they started somewhere too. They didn't just wake up and everything is just, you know, thou art the Lord and, you know, all that. Like, they started somewhere too. Everybody starts somewhere. And never be ashamed of where you start. Um, never be ashamed of where you start. And where you start, where, where you start. Who knows where you'll end up. And building that relationship with God is so important. It'll give you discernment. It'll give you understanding. It'll give you peace. It'll give you hope. And it's the first and it's the first level of the triad. A relationship with God is the foundation. And it will and it will bleed into the relationship with yourself. You'll get to know yourself. And I'll talk about that later. Um, but the relationship with yourself is the second most important relationship you'll ever have. A lot of people struggle not because um, they don't know their purpose. It, it's just that they don't know themselves. They follow everyone else thinking that that's the way to go. 
But the way to go is to get quiet and to figure out who you are and to figure out what you like. A lot of people go throughout their lives without th figuring out who they are and and who they like, what they like, what foods they like, what what experiences they would like to have. They just follow everyone else. So uh, I'll tell you a quick story. When I was um, in Bible college, not not in Bible college, but when I was at the end of high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I went to this program um, at, um, at a college near my home. And I just went there because everyone else was going there, so um, I went there because all my friends and other people with disabilities were going there. I didn't go there because I wanted to go there. I went there because other people were going there and I thought that's where I should go. And, and because of that, I'm not blaming the program, but because of my attitude about it, I didn't get much out of it because it wasn't where I was meant to be. Now I picked up a lot of useful tools because, you know, all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord and are the call according to his purposes. But if I had t taken time and really understood who I was and what I wanted to do, I would have been in a much better place. And, and what I tell people in their 20s out there is go and experience life. Um, go and volunteer in different places. Go and do different things that you've never done before. Go experience different things that you've never experienced before. I think, I think some of the problem with people in church is they don't experience anything new. They don't... Um, most people that I know in church and, not, and other church, they go from work to home to work again to the grocery store and all these things that we have to do, never really experiencing who they are. And I think the Lord is calling us to just experience life, experience different things, Take a dance class. Take cake decorating. Uh, you know, go skydiving if you can. Have new experiences. Go to the symphony. Go to the opera. Go to all these places. Read different books. Um, take up a new language. Do something that is new. Do something. Have a new experience. Uh, Go down a street near your home that you haven't gone to before. Introduce your, if you, if you live in an apartment, introduce yourself to a neighbor that you haven't um, introduced before. Have new experiences. And when you have new experiences, purpose will meet you. Purpose meets you not when you're sitting around and, you know, whatever. Um, purpose meets you when you're experiencing life, when you're experiencing new things, when you're experiencing, when you're having new experiences. And I think the Lord is saying today, He wants His church to have new experiences, to go out there and embrace life and, and just realize that life is to be lived. He didn't just design this world, this world is horrible, this world is not our home. He designed this world for us to enjoy and have life. He said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. And that prosperity, part of that prosperity is enjoying life. And he said also that, um, 
he comes that we would have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't come for us to just go at home, sit at home and or sit at work and work for somebody else. He came for us so that we could feel alive. He came for us so we can have joy, we can have peace, we can have new experiences. So he, I feel that he's really saying today that he wants us to have new experiences, that he wants us to enjoy and embrace new things, take up a new language, do a new activity. And in that, you'll discover in trying different things, uh, teenagers or young people in their 20s, you'll discover your purpose. Purpose doesn't come like, oh, uh, I am God, and thus saith the Lord. Purpose comes when you're doing things. You may be doing things, and a light bulb strikes and says, oh my God, I really like doing this. I really like working with seniors. I really like cake decorating. I really, I really like this. And he's really calling us to have new experiences and to enjoy our lives. Too many Christians are so miserable. Too many people, forget about Christians, too many people are so miserable. Too many people are just, um, just not enjoying where they are. And I think he's calling us to enjoy our lives, to enjoy where he put us. And don't long for so, something when you're not enjoying what you have. Enjoy your family, enjoy your friends, enjoy your life. And, and in enjoying your life, you'll develop that relationship with, you, with yourself. You'll discover what you like, who you are. One of the detriments, I believe, to this society is Nobody is discovering where, what, what or who they are. They're copying what they think is, is the coolest thing to do. And social media makes this worse because you're seeing that person get married at 32, so you think you're 32, so you should get married. Or that person have that big of a house, or that person have uh, that vacation, so you think you should have that vacation too. Everybody's race, everybody's calling, everybody's purpose and destiny is different. Embrace your journey. Don't envy somebody else's journey. Embrace your journey because your journey is unique to where you're going. Your journey is unique to what God has you doing. Listen, I will never ever be T.D. Jakes. I will never ever be Stephen Furtick. I will only be Rachel Esdale. I can only preach the way Rachel Esdale preaches. And I believe that in my preaching is a unique way that people can come to Christ that only I can that only I can give. I don't have the tools that other pre preachers have, but all, 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 the only thing, the only person I can be is me. The only person I have to be is myself, not everybody else. And when you're so busy copying and trying to be like everybody else, you miss the uniqueness of who you are. You miss the uniqueness of where you stand. You miss the uniqueness of, of what God's put in you. And there are so many unique things about you that if you stop to take a look and you stop to get to know yourself and what you like and who you are and what you don't like, you'll get to, you'll get to see the uniquest parts of you. God says today, you are unique. You are unique. You are unique. Stop trying to be like all your friends. Stop trying to be like your neighbor next door. Stop trying to have 
the hottest car. Stop trying to make your kids be like your neighbor's kids. They will never be like your neighbor's kids. They can only be, be who they are. And you trying to force your kids to be something they're not is inhibiting their purpose, their destiny. So let foster who they are. Foster who they are, not who you want them to be who God has called them to be. And my last point is um, after um, building a relationship with yourself. Um, oh, the last thing is, um, I don't know if you have heard of the movie Runaway Bride. Um, this goes back to the point earlier when I said um, trying to be like everybody else, trying to fit in with everybody else because you think it's the best thing to do. Runaway Bride is a chick flick. I know some of you men are groaning out there, but what can I say? I can only be me. Um, about this bride who keeps on running away and this reporter who finds her. And in the movie, um, you see that she likes the eggs of every guy she uh, was engaged to. And at the end of the movie, she found out that she liked eggs Benedict. She made a choice. She discovered who she was. She discovered what, what eggs she liked. And a lot of people uh, don't discover who they are, don't build that relationship with themselves because they're afraid of what they'll find. And the Lord is saying today, don't be afraid of what you'll find. Don't be afraid of what you'll find because at the end of this, He will get the glory. And don't be afraid to discover things about yourself that you didn't know. Spend time with yourself. And T.D. Jakes said in an interview, he said, I, I've dated myself, I know me. And he said, which I agree with, he said, before you date anyone else, date you. And that's a lot, and that's a problem with a lot of relationships, is we're dating this person and dating that person and dating him and dating her without really getting to know ourselves and we're trying to find the person to fill stuff in us that we don't even know. So before you date anyone else, before you figure to marry anyone else, date yourself. Date yourself, get to know who you are, what you like, what, uh, what your um, proclivities are what your, um, what games you like to play, like, you know, get to know things about yourself, um, to the light things, to the deep things. Really discover who you are. Use your 20s to discover who you are. Use your 20s to discover who you are. Use your teens to begin that discovery. Don't use your, your teens with a bunch of friends who mean you no good. Use your teens to discover who you are. Don't use your, your teens trying to uh, fit in. Use your teens discovering the ways you stand out because God needs you to stand out in this kingdom as a young person for all those teenagers. And for all the older people my age, stand out. Don't be, a, don't hide your uniqueness. If you're loud and brawling for the kingdom, be loud. If you're quiet for the kingdom, be quiet. Discover who you are and wear that badge with, proud, with pride. Discover who he made you to be. 
discover who who he created in you because I sense right now there are dormant there are dormant um, attributes about yourself that you don't even know there are dormant things about yourself that you don't even know and he wants you to to discover those things about yourself because those things about yourself are what makes you unique and those things about yourself will be what what stands you out from the crowd and those attributes that you discover while you're doing life will be what he will use to win people to the kingdom and your relationship with God is the first part of the triad the relationship with yourself is the second part of the triad the third part of the triad is your relationship with others um this is important because we need to learn how to relate to others because God related to other Jesus related to others all throughout the Gospels he talked to others he communicated with others he leveled with others and a lot of uh, Christians just communicate with others in order to to try and get them saved but I would um, admonish you to just talk to people just because they're interesting people and if the Lord opens up that way of salvation he does but but don't go in there saying oh my god I need to make friends with this person because I need to get them saved no you don't because you can't save anyone God does the saving he will he may use you to plant a seed, but that shouldn't be the goal of a relationship. The goal of a relationship should be just to get to know a person, just, just to relate to that person, just to find commonalities in that person. And a lot of, um, especially uh, believers, just stick with relationships with believers but I would say get to know different kinds of people get to know people with different opinions different people with different political views people of uh, different races different faces different religions and I'm not saying you have to be friends with all of them but just get to know them and I think there are three categories of friendships. I think there are the multitude friendships, there are the um, disciple friendships, and there are the, clo um, the Peter, James, and John friendships. And I think you can let a lot of people into their lives, but you need into your life but you need to put them in those categories. Um, the, the multitude friendships, when Jesus was, uh, the multitude relationships are the relationships that the people you meet every day, but they're not very close to you, but you communicate with them and you, and you see them and you, uh, say hello to them. Those are the multitude relationships. Basically, it's everyone you come in contact with on a daily basis. Uh, Jesus, um, the multitudes were around Jesus. He taught them, he communicated with them, but they weren't really close. The disciple friendships are your they're a close circle, but they're not um, uh, very, they're not your confident not. They're a close circle, but they're not your confidants. These are people that are closer than the multitude, but you don't tell them everything. 
like these are people like your co-workers or maybe people at church that you talk talk to once a week about some things and you can feel comfortable sharing some, some things with them. They're a smaller group of people than the multitude, but still not close. And the other group is the um, Peter, James, and John, your close friends. These people you bring really close. Like, they know everything. They know about your family. These are the people you call when things are going wrong in your life. These are the people you call when you need someone to call. These are the people you call when you don't know what to do. When your son, or when your son is going crazy. These are the people you call when your hormones are going crazy and you're like, Girl, I'm over at his house. I want to, uh, uh, I want to have, I want to so have sex with him. And your, and their friend is like, calm down, get out of there. You know, they talk you down from your um, situations in your life, and they're close to you. You, they're like family to you, and they're like. They're like so wonderful to you. And these, that group is very small. Um, if that group is very big and you're telling everybody everything and you're bringing everybody close, that creates a disaster. Keep th that close group very small. Um, because when you, when you keep, when that close group is big, um, when you tell all your friends everything that is going on in your life, it creates problems. Trust me, keep that close group very small and ask the Lord who is in that close group, who is the person that I should be, who are the people that I should be letting into the uh, multitude group, into the disciple group, and into my uh, close friends group, my confidants, as TDJ calls them. And sometimes it takes time to build that re the, these relationships. These relationships, especially the confidant ones, um, take time to build. They take years to build, and. TV has lied to us. TV has told us that these friendships are easy to build and we need to, uh, there are, you have four friends or three friends that you know all your life and you just build those relationships. For some people that is, that is true, but for most of us, I think that um, at, at times, we have close friends and and sometimes those close friends drift away because um, the the timing is over and sometimes we have close friends all their life all, all our lives but um, whatever stage of friendships your friends are at whether you're the kind of person to have friends from when you were a child, when you're, whether you're the kind of person that makes friends easily, whether you're the kind of person that doesn't make friends easily, whatever relationship stage you're at, just, just celebrate that stage because you're a different person and because that person, uh, because the people you see have lifelong friends doesn't mean that's the way God de de destined you to have friends. He may, he may have destined you to have friends for a reason. And once that reason is over, they leave with your blessing. And don't cry when they leave. It's just that their time is over. And you're not defective. It's not you. 
It's God's purpose in you. And you need to celebrate your friends for as long as you have them. And whatever purpose you have them for, celebrate them. Celebrate them and know that God has, has a plan for your friendships. And make sure your friendships are taking you somewhere. Um, make sure your friends are a part of your destiny and God's plan for your life. And sometimes friends um, take on different reasoning in your life. There are some friends where you just hang out and that's their purpose for, you, for your life. You just hang out and have, have fun, go to the movies and whatever. And there are, and there are some friends relationships that are deeper and those are necessary too those um there are some friends that you can talk about work things with and there are some friends that you can talk about different situations with like if you have a disability you can talk about uh different uh situations that you have to deal with regarding your disability and how to work that out. Some friends fill different functions and, and you need to understand and ask God what function does this person fill? I've had a lot I've heard a lot of people say that if they if they are not ordained by God you don't need them or if they don't if they're not a part of your purpose, you don't need them. But I think friends fill different purposes. And it's not that you don't need them. It's just that they fill a different purpose. They may not fill the purpose of you, you know, having deep spiritual conversations with. They may be the purpose for you uh, to go to the movies and hang out. Or they may feel the purpose to talk about that work thing or whatever I mentioned before. So know the purpose that your friends fill. Each friend in your life is filling a purpose. And ask God, back to the first relationship I talked about, ask God in your relationship with him. Uh, the first part of the triad. What what purpose does that friend fill in your life? So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. I love you. And as um, as I sign off today, I'm going to sing uh, one of my favorite songs from Sandy Patty. It's called The Best of Friends. When it comes to building friendships, we are much the same. A little bit uncertain at the thought of change. But remember friendships truly start when bridges span from heart to heart. And even when we're far apart, the love remains. He's the best of friends, the forever kind. He's the best of friends, he'll never change with time. When you look beyond tomorrow, there's a love that will not end. Jesus offers nothing less. He wants to be the best of friends. There are friends who say they love you. And you know it's true. And others who will notice when you're feeling blue but there's only one who truly sees 
inside your heart, yet still believes in all the possibilities he has for you. He's the best of friends, the forever kind. He's the best of friends, I'll never change with time. When you look beyond tomorrow, there's love that will not end. Jesus offers nothing less. He wants to be the best of friends, the best of friends, the forever kind. He's the best of friends, he'll never change with time. When you look beyond tomorrow, there's a love that never ends. Jesus offers nothing less, he wants to be the best of friends. The best of friends. Bye guys. See you next week.